OpenAI, which is only really open about consuming all the world's energy, just got rattled to its core. DeepSeek, a new AI startup run by a Chinese hedge fund, created a new open weights model called R1 that allegedly beats OpenAI's best models in most metrics. And they did it for $6 million, with GPUs that run at half the memory bandwidth of OpenAI's. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a bunch of scraps! Besides the embarrassment of a Chinese startup beating OpenAI using 1% of the resources, their model can distill other models to make them run better on slower hardware. Meaning this Raspberry Pi can run one of the best local Quen AI models even better now. OpenAI's entire moat is predicated on people not having access to the insane energy and GPU resources to train and run massive AI models. But that moat disappears if anyone can buy a GPU and run a model that's good enough for free anytime they want. But sensationalist headlines aren't telling you the full story. This Raspberry Pi can technically run DeepSeek R1, but it's not the same thing as DeepSeek R1 671B, which is a 400 gigabyte model. That model, the one that actually beats ChatGPT, still requires a massive amount of GPU compute. But the big difference is, assuming you have a few 3090s, you could run it at home. You don't have to pay OpenAI for the privilege of running one of their fancy models. You can just install a llama, download DeepSeek, and play with it to your heart's content. And even if you don't have a bunch of GPUs, you could technically still run DeepSeek on any computer with enough RAM. Like here, it's running on my 192 core Ampere 1 server. It's running DeepSeek 671B at about four tokens per second, which isn't crazy fast, but this server won't set you back like 100,000 bucks either. Even though it's only using a few hundred watts, which is honestly pretty amazing, a noisy server like this isn't gonna be in everyone's living room. A Raspberry Pi could be though. So let's look at how the smaller 14B model runs on it. It's definitely not going to win any speed records. Testing a few different prompts, I got about 1.2 tokens per second. I mean, it runs, but if you want a chatbot for like rubber duck debugging or to give you a few ideas for your next YouTube title, this isn't fun. But we can speed things up. A lot. All we need is an external graphics card, because GPUs and the VRAM on them are way faster than CPUs and system memory. I have this setup I've been testing with an AMD W7700 graphics card. It has 16 gigs of speedy VRAM, and as long as it can fit the whole AI model in that, it should be way faster than any CPU. And it is, like 10 times faster. I can get between 20 to 50 tokens per second, depending on the type of work I'm doing. Here's the raw output from an interactive session, and if I look at NVTOP, I can see all this processing is being done on the GPU. And if I run LlamaBench, it's reporting 24 to 54 tokens per second. And this GPU isn't even targeted at LLMs. You can go a lot faster. If you're interested in running GPUs on Raspberry Pis, or maybe even other ARM boards, well, you're in for a treat this year. Not only do we have AMD GPUs working great, the new Intel open source drivers are also working. It, somewhat. <laughs> And NVIDIA might be in the cards too. On top of that, I have an Orion 06, a CM5 ITX board, and even the Hi5 Premier P550, all of which have full-size by 16 PCIe slots. So even if the year of the Linux desktop will never come, at least we'll get custom ARM and RISC-V PCs. AI is still in a massive bubble. NVIDIA just lost more than half a trillion dollars in value in one day after DeepSeek was launched. But their stock price is still eight times higher today than it was in 2023, and it's not like anyone's hyping up AI any less now. The one good takeaway, I think, is people might realize we don't need to devote more than half the world's energy resources or set up a Dyson sphere around the sun just to help computers solve trillions of multiplication problems to spit out another thousand mediocre web apps. The other takeaway is that there's new confusion in AI models over who precisely is Winnie the Pooh. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.